Well, welcome, um, Prinella Scales, to this fabulous DVD. Now, the first question is, uh, how were you chosen for the part of Sybil, and what were your first impressions of the part? I really don't know. Um, I think John Howard Davis suggested me, and I, I went along to see John in his flat, and he was in bed with flu, um, and I was sort of shown into the room, and he said, is there anything you want to ask me about the script? And I said, well, yeah, why did they ever get married? And he sort of put a pillow over his head and said, oh, God, I thought I was afraid you were going to ask that. Um, and he couldn't tell me. <laughs> but, of course, we talked about it. And um, I, I think it was probably, may have been my idea that she should be a bit less posh than him because we couldn't see otherwise um, what, what, what would have attracted them to each other. And I, I think I had, a, I had a sort of vision of her her family being in catering on the south coast, you know, and her working behind a bar somewhere. He being demobbed from his national service and getting his gratuity, you know, and going in for a drink and this really quite oopsy barmaid behind the bar. And she fancied him because he was so posh. And um, they sort of thought they'd get married and run a hotel together. And it was all a bit sort of romantic and idealistic. And uh, the grim reality then caught up with them. That, that, was, that was the thought. Now, did you do much research for the role, and was Sybil based on any characters you knew in your own life? Um, not any one specific person, no. Um, I think all, 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 the, all the things you do, you, you use certain... You use certain um, bits from probably singularly inappropriate people that you've met during your life, and it, it, um, it blends into one. There was a, a woman who ran a hotel uh, that my parents stayed in once, and she used to lean over the chair and say, do you find that tasty, Major? And I think that was a sort of tune in my head, maybe. Now, did you get any feedback about your interpretation of Sybil from genuine hoteliers? Um, everybody I've ever met in the hotel business uh, loves it, and, but I think that is very much due to the writing. They, I think they were ex they're extremely uh, meticulous people, John and Connie, and um, they, they, it was very, very, very well researched and written with great passion from deep anger about 12 aspects of hotel management. And once they'd written an episode on each one of those um, angers, they'd expiated their wrath and didn't need to do any more. Of course, they were under appalling pressure to do, to do um, a longer series, but they, they I think, very laudably um, stuck out against that. Have you ever felt the high profile of Forty Towers has overshadowed the achievements of your subsequent career in any way? Oh, I hope not. I think in this business it's extremely lucky to be associated with a successful television series because it does mean people take the giant step off the pavement into the building to see what you're going to do next. You know, it means that um, you can up to a point choose your parts in the live theatre and also, well, even in, 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 in television again, and that um, if people have enjoyed you in one thing and, and it's been successful and it's got the figures, um, management are, are quite keen to employ you as well, and it, it does broaden your choice. But has starring in the show ever impinged on your personal life in any way? No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a bit like her, and um, I, I think the media are always extremely disappointed to find that I'm not. But sorry, you know, I'm not. <laughs> now, how did you enjoy working with the other members of the Fawlty Towers cast? Adored them all. It was a magnificent cast, absolutely wonderful, right the way through. It was a... I, I can't say it was a idyllically happy time because it was such hard work you didn't have time to think about whether whether you were happy or not it was just a question of you know getting the lines learned by wednesday morning and rehearsing your knickers off until um you know until we actually recorded it on sunday night very 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 hard graft uh, with the formula anyway in this country i think in america they have at least two weeks for a half hour episode and in this country we only get a week even you know in the most successful BBC 
product. Uh, but um, certainly John was extremely rigorous and he used every second of that limited time and uh, was quite cross on the Wednesday morning if you didn't know it perfectly and quite rightly too. Uh, may I ask, the sign on the chain by the Egyptian fertility symbol, what is that? Um, oh, it's a um, Greek astrological sign. Oh, it's beautiful. Where did you get it? Um, Colchester, I think. Colchester? Oh, hello. Uh, can I speak to John Lawson, please? Oh, all right, I'll, I'll hold on. So the character symbol was certainly um, uh, vulnerable to... Uh, and a bit pushed for sexual fulfilment in view of uh, the, the neurosis of her husband. And uh, I don't know that, I don't think she would ever have uh, seduced a guest, you know. Probably too professional for that, because I'm sure she was born in the business. Do you have any particular memories of working alongside the old ladies, Mr. Jilly Fenty. Flower and Rennie Roberts? Did you know there's a psychiatrist, Steve? Yes, yes I did. Has he come for the major? What? <laughs> Has he come for the major? No. Oh, good. We were rather worried. I'm sure they have them in Birmingham, too. God bless them. No longer with us, but they were just wonderful, highly professional, absolute darlings, you know. Just good, good, good old pros. They were, they were, they were magnificent, yes. Lovely. How do you feel that Faulty Towers fits in with sitcom history? Do you think it was one of those shows that pushes the boundaries of the genre, or do you think it was more in the traditional mould? Well, uh, it seems to have made it, doesn't it? Because uh, it's just won the most popular sitcom of all time. The thing I, I'm really proud of in it is that it hasn't got slow, because usually when you see, when you see um, sitcoms made 10 or 15 or even 20 years ago, they may be charming and amusing, but they do, the pace usually seems terribly slow. And I'm very proud to say that that is neither true of Marriage Lines, which I did with Richard Browse many years before we did, um, did uh, Faulty Towers, or of Faulty Towers. I think it, they, they, they're, they're still quite fast, both of them. But then John is a highly original person. I think probably it is a, it is a, a classic in, in the real sense of the word, that it has something to say to people. Um, it still has something to say to people, and I hope still will many years hence.